I got this concrete bucket in the back here. I am once again in New Jersey for the thousandth time this month. <laughs> so let's get this thing back home. I use a jet ski trailer to get it. All right guys, so I just got this concrete bucket. This is supposed to be 33 cubic feet, so that's approximately 1.3 yards. I'm not sure how much it weighs yet. We'll find out, but here's the tag on it. You can see it says 1961. So I'm not sure if that says 96 or if it says 1961. I'm assuming it's 1961, but the the ones look a little bit weird. So the reason I went with this instead of a regular Garbro is first of all, the design of it. So this right now is 45 inches wide. So I wanted to do a couple mods to this. The first thing is it's not quite wide enough to load with a skid steer. So we got uh, 45, 44 inches to load it. Uh, my skid steer, I think, is 60-something. So what I want to try to do is make some flaps that go out to the side. And if that doesn't work, I guess maybe I can try to do something to the skid steer bucket. But the idea is that I want to be able to load this with gravel or load it from a truck or even load concrete into it from a skid steer as well. So I'm thinking to expand this to be wide enough for the skid steer. I'm going to take a piece of steel about like that, maybe like a foot by 16 inches. So I think what I'm going to do is take and make like a hook here and a hook here and that way it will kind of go in out of sight when you're using it. But when you're loading it up, you can kind of pull that out and let it rest on those hooks. I'm thinking that should work. At first I was thinking I could put something on here that was permanent that just stuck out, but I didn't realize that this arm goes up and down here. 
I paid eleven hundred dollars for this concrete bucket, and I'm gonna get a lot more use than just pouring concrete with it. I need this to build my house. I have a lot of concrete pours that I'm gonna do. So a pump truck each time is eight hundred dollars. One of the main reasons I wanted to use this bucket was actually for gravel as well as concrete because it's a concrete bucket but you can use it for gravel too that way you can place it just right where you want it This is what I was leaning towards the whole time. I mean, that's really rough, but.
So I think that worked pretty good. And you know, it was tall enough where I could actually see under the bucket and see what I was doing. I was a little bit worried about that because when you're doing that on the ground, the bucket's in the way and you can't see anything. But this is just high enough up, it's like three feet, that I can actually just look right underneath the bucket and see exactly what I'm doing. I know that I need to be between here and here and it's easy to see that and stay there because I can actually see it. So that part of it works really well. The only part that I think doesn't work well is the angle is not quite steep enough. So some of this stuff gets caught up on the side and then eventually it flows out a little bit. But you can see I only got a little bit out and the only reason I even got a little bit out is because at first I missed it. But that's one of those things where as you're doing it more, you get better at it. But I think overall though, the angle, even if it should be a little bit steeper, I think it's still fine because most likely the only stone that I'm gonna be spreading is gonna be straight clean stone. This is crusher run, so it's got a lot of fines in it. So I think the fines don't roll down and they clog it up quicker. But when you're using like a number two stone, number two stone is three quarter washed stone. It's a crushed washed stone. Um, and number one is even smaller, it's three eighths. That stuff flows a lot better. And for what I would need this for, that's what I would mainly need it for. It, Cause I always put a number two stone underneath footings. And usually I put a number two stone underneath the slabs. Um, and then I might top it with a number one stone. But either way, I never use any crusher run or any item four or anything like that underneath of my foundations. I could always make these plates longer or make new ones or add on to them or do something, but I think this is fine. So originally I was trying to make it so that this plate, as you're lifting this up, it would fold that in and it would drop down. And I did get it to do that, but you know, it's kind of dangerous with it up in the air like that. Because when this thing flips up like that, um, you know, I don't want anything falling on somebody. I think I could get at least two more scoops like that, maybe even a little bit more. You know, I'm almost thinking the plan should be when we're attached to the crane to have this thing up past here and still attached to the crane even upright as far as it could be and then maybe the trick is as soon as you put in the first scoop then you just lift up with the crane which will lift this side up it'll shift everything that way and then you can continue on i think that's a much better option because you can see i got some off to the side here off to the side here and I got a bunch here that I got to deal with now and I don't have anything back there so I think that's the key right there All right, so a couple days ago I started this up and you guys could see it was leaking and it was this big hose right here. This thing is about almost two inches wide. It's like 10 feet long and it goes inside the boom there. I had to replace that, that was like $400. That powers the, the spool right there for the cable. So when I was letting out the cable, that's when it burst. So I also had to replace another hose inside of here. It was this little tiny one on the stabilizer there. So now we're good to go. So I'm gonna bring this down because I need to start using it. I need to bring it down where my house site is gonna be. And we're gonna test out that concrete bucket. So let's give this another try.
So I want to fix this handle real quick. You can see it's bent. It's out by about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch or so, but it's just enough to rub on the side and it makes it so that it doesn't go all the way straight up and down when you got it in motion, like when you got this flipped up. So I gotta get that bent back somehow. I really don't know how thick this is. I don't think it's solid, but it's probably at least quarter inch, maybe three eighths thick. All right, so that did the trick. This uh, moves freely all the way up and down. Almost hits there, but it doesn't. And over here, got a little bit more space, but not much. It was out of square. I guess I could have also cut that out and replaced it, but.
so yeah i guess that works you can put one bucket in and then tip it up and it all goes to the back and then you have more room down here and you can put these things back on that is a little inconvenient though to have to take these off just to be able to lift it and shift it back but this will get to places where it's really hard to reach with any other machine to, to put gravel especially something that you can manually dump like this in a very specific location inside of a foundation or something i'm okay with the deal that i got just to use this for concrete so i guess using it for gravel is kind of a plus it's kind of a bonus so now i know i can use it for gravel but it's just going to take a little bit of work you got to have somebody on the ground pretty much assisting the whole time because obviously it's not convenient to get in and out of that crane to do this but if you had somebody that was just sitting there they could make pretty quick work out of it so let's fill this up as much as we can and then i'm going to dump it again and see how it does I probably should have leveled out the crane a little bit better. I need some more cribbing on that side. But this isn't really a heavy load, so I wasn't worried about it. But this thing does pretty good. So I think it's ready to go. I'm going to try to incorporate some sort of elephant trunk for the bottom. Something that kind of attaches to a couple hooks maybe and disattaches pretty easily. The only problem with that is it's going to make it so you have to put it that much higher because that thing is like six feet long. But that does make it a lot easier to pour in the foundations with that elephant trunk. 
Now I have one, I just need to figure out a way to put it on here. But you definitely don't see concrete buckets like this anymore. This is made out of uh, pretty thick steel here. This is not just sheet metal like some of the other ones are. So I can't wait to pour concrete and gravel with this bucket. Building my house is right around the corner. I'm kind of done with my work projects for a while just so I could work on my house. So I need to get a few more pieces of equipment ready to go for that. And then I'll be ready very shortly. So I'll see you guys on all those videos.